Hey everybody, you are tuned in to Hanging With Here To Zen, the show that is a place for people who love all kinds of music. We really hope you enjoy your time with us today. Make sure you hit subscribe if you already haven't and hit that notification bell to be kept up to date. We would love to hear from you over on our social media platforms, so just search here to Zen and you'll find us. Lastly, could you leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or Google Podcasts or wherever you're going to be tuning in from? Those reviews help other people to find us, so we appreciate the reviews and the support. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hey man, how's it going? Hey Carl, how's things, man? Doing good. So you're not not far off uh, being on our shores, um, right? <laughs> How's yeah, it feel? Yeah, you, you've like you've had a bit of recharge time. I think you've been off for about a month now. Is that correct? Yeah, something like that. Yep. So the, the guys are probably all ready to. Uh, well, they've loved being home. They're probably ready to get back at it. I'm sure. I think so. Yeah. And also, especially one like this, where it's like we're going somewhere cool. It's uh, yeah. it's nice and quick. You know, like um, yeah. sometimes the longer tours can be a bit daunting, but this is just like, you know, go for a week, come back, should be a good time. Now, you've been in the band for over a year now, and the album is actually approaching its first anniversary on the 9th, I think it is. Yep, um, that's right. How's the last year been for you personally? It's been awesome. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's been crazy. <laughs> you know, it's been, uh, the touring has been pretty consistent, like not quite nonstop. Like I've had time in between to work on stuff at home and uh, do my usual, you know, home stuff. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been crazy. It's been a wild ride. What's been the highlight so far of the last year? Um, I mean, getting the album out obviously was a big one, you know, because that uh, that that was in the works for a while too. Like, I I recorded my parts with the band a year before it came out. I remember we were recording the album in Nashville in September twenty twenty one. So it's like the the build up to that album was a pretty long time coming, and even longer for the other guys. Um, so getting that out was like the first big milestone, and then the tours have been awesome too. I did a couple of U.S. ones. We did Europe. Um, we played on the uh, 70,000 tons of metal cruise earlier this year. So um, all of that stuff. <laughs> okay. So I've got to now ask about the, the cruise environment when it comes to a metal band, because, you know, to me, it brings like crowd surfing to a whole new thing when you're <laughs> in the middle of a damn ocean. But um, right. <laughs> what, what is it like? Do, do you feel constricted being on the boat? Is it is there a lot of freedom to move around without always being around the fans? Oh, I, I loved it. I um I would love to go back even just as a fan, <laughs> you know, anytime. Like I'm I don't think I'm gonna make it this upcoming year, but um just in general, yeah, I hope we can go back sometime. Um it was it was a total blast. It's like uh it's it's hard to even explain it <laughs> how how awesome it was. Um what were your, so something what were your highlights? Well, just, um, you know, it's just it was like some of the best sort of energy I've seen from like people at um uh, like on a tour or like this type of event you know i think part of it's because compared to normal shows where like you know everybody comes out for the night and maybe they've got work the next morning or whatever you know they got stuff going on this it's like everybody's on vacation and everybody's just going nuts <laughs> for a week so um the, the shows are crazy because it's like yeah just everybody has the whole week free and that really changes the the atmosphere um and you're with all these awesome bands too it's like uh, even if you're there performing, it's like you're kind of there. It feels like you're there as a fan too, just with all these awesome bands that are just hanging out with you on the same boat. And you, you run into everybody constantly. So like there were all these bands we met on there and you just you just keep seeing them around, you know, many times throughout the week. So it's a crazy experience, even just outside of the uh, the shows. You just, we met so many people, um, you know, both fans and people from other bands. And yeah, it's just awesome. They take good care of the bands there and everything too. You're just eating great, having a great time. Did you sit there like a festival and do like a timetable of all the bands you wanted to see to make sure you got across? No, not quite. Um, I, I kept it pretty loose, but uh, I managed to see a lot of shows though. You know, but it was, it was just sort of in the moment. You're like, okay, these guys are playing. Let's go check it out. <laughs> you know? Yep. You also filled in from Rivers and Nile for a couple of shows, I believe. Yeah, that's right. That was um, basically a month ago now, just barely over a month. Yeah. yeah that we'll was cool. So, They'll be with us soon too. Right. Yeah. I think uh, they, I believe they're 
in the country right now. Yeah. I think uh I think they just got there. <laughs> yeah. What what was that experience like having a sort of um be the pinch hitter for a, a different band on a did you have a lot of notice? I know it was because there was a, a baby mm-hmm. coming in, but yeah, did you get a fair bit of prep time? I did, yeah. And people were asking me that because um I, I didn't even think about this, but I guess just the way it was announced and presented, um it seems like a lot of people assumed that I learned the whole set in like a couple of days, which is not the case at all. Um, so they, they hit me up like at least two months in advance. Um, so it was, it was all planned, you know, so I had plenty of time to uh, be sufficiently prepared, but uh, yeah, it was, it was awesome. It's like, so first of all, they're already our good friends. I mean, I've, I've toured with them twice already just in the last year yep. and Fallujah has a longer history with them beyond that too. And then there's also some guys in the band that I've known since before I was in Fallujah. So, you know, they're, they're good friends. So it's not like I had to, I'm sort of meet all these people for the first time, you know, I figured it, we'd have a good time on the road together and we did. Cool. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It was, it was, it was a cool experience. Now, it's kind of nice just showing up and having one job, <laughs> like just only being the vocalist and like no other responsibilities outside of that. Cause I'm used to in Fallujah. It's like, it's, it's my band, you know, it's like, I'm part of it. So it's like, I have to do merch and we, we drive ourselves and there's just a lot of responsibilities to go with it versus this is like, I just, show up and <laughs> do my thing and that's it a lot of people would probably have that misconception when bands are touring that it's like this multi-million dollar organization they don't realize that the band members wear many hats what are, what are the other guys do like you're a merch guy you all share the driving what do the other guys sort of take responsibility on yeah you know and as for that general conception it there's so much variance like in the scene like some bands do have a big crew and even bands that are level like um we're kind of at the point where we we could afford more crew members in a way but um it would make things more difficult in terms of like fitting everybody in the van and it obviously cuts into uh what we can take away you know so um it's you know we we face those decisions sometimes in terms of whether we should be bringing on crew but we we lean more towards just doing stuff ourselves and just kind of doing it old school like that but um yeah we, we split a lot of duties on the road it's like we we all help drive um i've kind of taken on merch as my own job we, we used to kind of share it but then i just uh i don't know i kind of like just knowing where everything is and having my system for everything and i'm um, just being more consistent with it um but you know like honestly the other guys have more responsibilities in terms of just their musical role in the band it's like i don't have to set up a bunch of gear you know i just show up with my mic two seconds before we go on and that's it yep um so they they deal with all the setup and tear down and everything like because i i don't really have to help load stuff on or off of stage either because i'm just doing merch until right up when we play the set and then as soon as we finish the set my job is to run over to merch and do that yep um, because that's kind of prime time for you know selling stuff so, um, so, you know, the other guys handle all the gear and everything. Um, but yeah, just moving stuff, loading the trailer, unloading the trailer, driving. Um, we share some of the social media duties, which is hard to find time for on the road too sometimes. Yep. Now, with the album being a year old, you would have been interjecting different songs in and out of the set. Has there been a song that surprised you how well it went over? And then a song that you were like, oh, I thought that was going to be great and it didn't connect? Huh. Um, good question. Yeah, we've, we've been messing with it a little bit. So when, when we first dropped the album, we played the whole album front to back live. And so we got to kind of, you know, try out the whole thing immediately on the tour. But I will say that when you, uh, when you do something like that, like, you know, cause you see the energy kind of go up and down during the set, like there's more parts where the crowd gets a little bit crazier, or maybe they rest for a bit in the middle. Um, I think part of it is just due to the, where they are in the set list also. You know, like first song, second song, whatever, versus being near the end, like people get a little bit more tired, you know. So we've we've tried um, moving some around, like there, there's some that we always play every time, other ones we've thrown in and out. Um, my favorite personally is the last song, Artifacts, yep. on the album, which um, we have we did when we did the full album and I've been wanting to bring it back since then. It just has never quite made the cut, but um, we're, we're playing that one in Australia, which I'm excited about. Excellent. So that's... Now, have you already started looking forward to it, like in the future for another album? Yeah. Yeah, we are. Um, we're in the early stages of working on material right now. So uh, we've been we've got a big pile of riffs and we're starting to arrange those into songs. And we have a lot of ideas as far as the big picture and general direction of the album. Um, but 
yeah, we're we're definitely in writing mode. Like we haven't started recording or anything yet, but we're working on demos and everything. And uh, I know for this one, we're really hoping to get it out more quickly than we did for Empyrean. Because Empyrean took, I mean, there were many complications. It's like there was COVID, there were lineup changes. There's, yeah. you know, it's it's a big, long album <laughs> on top of that. Um, for, for this one, I think uh, we probably want to do an album that's a little bit shorter and just yeah. really focus on sort of, uh, I don't know, like I, I want us to be more spontaneous with it and just... Uh, get something together based on sort of a snapshot of where we're at right now and what what we're excited about and yep. then hopefully have a quicker turnaround time compared to Imperium. now i need to ask um a lot of bands are going into the world of patreon at the moment and mm -hmm. how how do you find that working as a business model for the band or what kind of incentives do you give the people to join as a patreon for for Lugia? Yeah, so we've uh, we actually just passed our one year anniversary for the Patreon too. We launched it in August last year, and it's been really good. It's um, I see it as more of a supplemental thing compared to like the main business of the band. Um, like it's it's never, I don't think it's ever going to be the type of thing that would pay all our bills, you know, or anything close to that. But it is a way to sort of let the people that um are sort of like the next level of fans, you know, the the deeper sort of connected fans um it's a way to let them not only support the band but also get some more exclusive stuff that we don't always share on social media or whatever else um but it's it's been really successful for us so far um and yeah as far as what we do on it like uh, every month we have so first of all we have a discord server that you get access to when you sign up on any tier of the patreon and every month we have a just like live um, video hangout session, basically like a group zoom call with whoever wants to join from the Patreon. Yep. That's always fun. Like we, we sort of talk about what, what we're doing, what's going on with us. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty unstructured as everybody kind of hangs out, you know, we just yep. kind of get to know everyone. So that's been cool. Um, we also have been uploading like uh, sort of unreleased, like demos or sometimes instrumental tracks or like isolated stems. Like for example, we've got some of um, our bassist, Evan, we have some of his like isolated bass tracks on there, which is kind of cool to hear. Yep. I mean, stuff like that that you can't really find otherwise. Guitar tabs we've been adding. Okay, cool. So that, it's basically, it's like the icing on the cake for whatever better word for those people that want to join. Right, and I, I think, um, I, I find that the biggest, it, it seems like the biggest reason people join isn't, uh, like for like a transactional um like like i feel like people don't join so much for perks as they do to support the band directly yep. that seems to be the main appeal of it and i understand that too because i've subscribed to other people's patreons and it's it's not so much seen as like what are you giving me and what am i giving you that's it's part of it you know you don't want to yep. waste your money either but um it's it's more of the sense and understanding that your money is going directly to the artists on a regular basis to support everything they're doing sure now, so uh, now with yeah, the band, I, I just I just find it's different from like selling merch or other things like that. Yeah. You know, it's 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 more intimate, more connected for sure. That's great. Um, it's just, it's just something I've looked at for for us, and it's a little bit daunting at the moment. So maybe we'll get there down the track. Yeah, hit um, me up if you want any uh, tips or anything. We've, yeah, we've learned sure, some man. lessons along the way, restructured things a few times. So that's good to know. Now with the band, yeah, you, know, you always read Wikipedia and all that crazy stuff, and you know, there's so many different sub-genres and then sub-sub-genres of metal and I hear you guys call tech metal and a couple of different things. Now if you were going to invite someone, if you had like a guest list pass and you said you have to come and you've never heard the band, we are blank, what would it be? I think we usually say atmospheric death metal. That seems to be the label that some people use that makes the most sense to us. Um, but, you know, it's all, uh, there's a lot of overlap between things, you know, technical metal, death metal, prog metal, um, wherever you want to land in that, you know, but I, I think uh, something that sort of points out the fact that there's some like melodic or atmospheric elements in the music too, it's not just like Cannibal Corpse brutal, you know. Yep. No, no, atmospheric works for me because especially with your vocal lines, they can there's swells, there's so many different things that intertwine between the music. So atmospheric is, sounds really funny, but I think your instrument being your voice is what makes it the atmospheric. Whereas the guitar side is very tech 
and the True. drums are very tech. So I think that's a really good um, description. So with you selling merch, yeah, thanks. how the fuck do you do a vocal warm up? <laughs> that merch is my warm up actually. Um, okay. So I, I, if I wasn't selling merch and using my voice all day before the show, I probably would warm up in some way, but I find that that's plenty. <laughs> and by the yeah. time it's time to go on stage, it's like, my, my voice isn't uh, doesn't need to be woken up at all. It's already a little bit tired, if anything. Okay. Um, so I tend to not really warm up um, on top of that at all. Just And again, it's it's different on tour versus uh, doing like a one-off show at home or maybe during recording, yep. something like that. Maybe I would warm up a little bit more. Um, but I find that on tour, it's like, for me, I find I have to work more to preserve my voice more so than get it warmed up. So it's like, I'm already doing plenty of vocals and talking and everything anyways. Um, I don't really end up feeling the need to scream anymore outside of that, you know, even if it's just a few minutes for warm up. So I, I'll, I'll do just a real quick, uh, just check, make sure my voice feels normal, like literally five seconds, just like, okay, I know basically where I'm at today and just sort of roll with that. So what's the way you preserve your voice then? Um, I don't <laughs> I really do anything. I just, but that, that's just my point is that I, I try to not really do any more vocals than I have to you know, yeah. outside of like what we do on stage. So I, I guess that's the main thing, you know, because some people, you know, everybody's different. Everybody's voice is different and everybody's screaming techniques are different. So some people like having more in-depth warm-ups, you know, maybe 10 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. Um, but I've, I, I tried that at first and I just found I was just getting more tired. So that's, yeah. that's basically, I just try not to yell or scream too much if I can. Sure. All right, man, like we're, we're going to have to end this one for the day. You've probably got some more on the way, but tell Australia what's in store from in the not too distant future indeed. Yeah, I mean, so we're, we're looking forward to it. We're obviously uh, coming out there with cattle decapitation very soon. Um, we'll be there next week. We've got six shows with them and then one additional headlining show that Fallujah added after the tour in Melbourne. Yep. And yeah, we're just we're looking forward to it. We're going to be playing Empyrean songs there for the first time. It'll be my first time in Australia. And uh, yeah, just come out to a show and come say hi to us if you can. Awesome, man. We'll see you in a, a week or two. Yep. Sounds good. Thanks for your time, Carl. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.